Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Welcome to worship on this 15th Sunday of Pentecost. Uh, joined again by Rita and, and Rob, making our beautiful music this morning. Uh, and we begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who calls us beloved children, who gathers us into one flock, who guides us into all truth. Amen. And now let us confess our sins, trusting that God will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Faithful and just God, we confess that we are captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We have not loved our sisters and brothers as you have first loved us. Forgive us, God, of mercy. Let your Holy Spirit work in us to change our lives and make us new. That we may know the abundant life given in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And this is love. Not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent the Son to atone for our sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, I announce to you that your sins are forgiven. Let the perfect love of God cast out fear, fill you with joy, and inspire you to live for others. Amen. And now with the peace of the Lord, a peace that surpasses all human understanding, be with you all. I invite you, wherever you are, whether you're with someone or you're virtually watching us, to share the peace. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that, pursuing what you have promised, we may share your heavenly glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first reading this morning comes to us from Genesis, the 50th chapter, beginning in verse 15. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brother said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crimes of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crimes of the servants of God of your father. Joseph wept when he spoke to them. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to harm me, God intended it for good, in order to persevere for numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The Gospel reading this morning comes to us from St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. And when he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, the Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payments to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me. I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him his debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay me what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. And then he went and threw him into prison until he repaid the debt. When his fellow slaves heard what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave! I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I have had mercy on you? And his anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your sister or brother from your heart. This is the gospel of our Lord. I greet you the grace, peace, mercy, and love poured into our lives by God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Forgiveness. I think these two lessons that we just heard, the common bond there is forgiveness. This, this Joseph story, the great story, the long story. You know the story, but I'll, I'll go through it anyway. Joseph. The favorite son of Jacob gave him a beautiful coat, and all his brothers were jealous. And one day when they were out, they plotted to, to kill Joseph. But they, they couldn't bring themselves to do it until they sold him into slavery. And they took back his coat and told his father that he had been killed, so they had put animal blood on the coat. And Joseph 
sold into slavery in Egypt, became an interpreter of dreams for Pharaoh. And because of this wonderful gift that he had, Pharaoh put him in charge of many things. And then abandoned him in Israel. And Joseph's brothers went to Egypt to try to get food. Joseph recognized them, but they didn't recognize Joseph. But he took pity on them. And he gave them food. And then he invited them to come and live in Egypt so they would never be hungry. And this is where we sort of pick up this story that Jacob is dying. And his request to Joseph, please forgive your brothers. Even though they did horrible things to you, please forgive them. Joseph, being a, a man of God, a good and honest man, that even though you intended to do me harm, God had different plans. See, sometimes when things look like they're not working out and bad things are happening to us like they happened to Joseph, God has a different plan. He had a different plan for Moses. He had a different plan for Abraham. And he had different plans for Saul, who turned into Paul, and for Peter. God has plan for us that we cannot begin to understand. But because Joseph forgave his brothers, he was free to love. Now, now we come to this gospel text. And Peter is really worried about forgiveness here. It's interesting that he's worried about forgiveness because if anybody needs forgiveness, it's Peter. He's always messed up. And he says to Jesus, you know, how many times must I forgive someone if they go against me? Somebody in my church, and he said, seven times? And Jesus said, how about 77 times? How about you forgive whenever you need to have forgiveness be given? Not stick it to a number. And he told him a parable. He told him a parable about this king and a slave. And the slave owed the king, how much did he owe 10,000 talents. Now, a talent is worth 6,000 denarii. A denarii is a day's pay. So we're talking here about 6 million days of pay. It can't be paid off. It's an outrageous number. The point is that it's a number that can't even be calculated. And yet the king, God, who gave him everything that he owed him, thinking that maybe he would just change his heart. But that wasn't the case, because this same slave who had just been given a new lease on life through the forgiveness of the king, through the mercy of God, wanted to extract a measly hundred denarii from a fellow slave. He was given this gift, but he doesn't want to give this same gift back. He's selfish and consumed. And he has this guy thrown into prison. But the king hears about this from the other slaves. And he says, this is not going to work. Take that slave and bring him to me. I don't want him tortured until all his debts are paid off. Watch. And the parable says, and the same will be for you if you don't forgive. Now, forgiveness is tricky stuff. We all want forgiveness. Amen? I mean, we all want to be forgiven. There's no question about that. It just in the beginning when we saw our worship, we do confession and forgiveness. We forgive one another as God has forgiven us. We're not always so willing to forgive as we ought to be forgiven. 
I remember the story that I heard from a rabbi that a woman came to him and said, Rabbi, my husband left me and the children. We struggle to pay the debts. I tell my kids I can't take them to the movies. We don't always have food to put on the table. And here he is in a new city living it up with his new wife. How can I forgive him? And the rabbi's response was, who's suffering here? He's in his new place. He doesn't care. You have to let this go. See, we have to forgive to move on with our life. The opposite of forgiveness, I think, is unforgiveness. When we don't forgive, the burden comes on us, even though people have done terrible things to us. If we can't find it in our hearts to forgive them, we can't be whole. We can't live the life that God intended us to live. The lesson here is forgiveness. God gives us unconditional forgiveness. 77 times, and if that's not enough, 77 more times, and if that's not enough, 77 more times, and on and on and on. God's forgiveness is immeasurable for us. And the only way that we can be free of the burden, the prison that we find ourselves in, is that we too are not willing to forgive those who have gone against us. Forgiveness, it works both ways. We clamor for forgiveness. Are we ready to forgive? In his holy name.
Amen. Amen. That's just beautiful. Somebody out there shout amen. I can hear you. Join together in the compassion of God. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. You walk to us when we are weak in faith. Uphold your church throughout the world. Make it a safe place of welcome. Strengthen faith through Bible studies and Sunday schools, confirmation class, and youth ministries. Nurture new ministries of education and growth. The heights of the heavens show us the vastness of your steadfast love. Have compassion on your creation. Where human selfishness has brought ruin and destruction, we look to you to heal, renew, and redeem your world. Make your ways known to the nations. Speak kindness to our bitter grudges. Settle our hearts when we want to settle accounts with violence. Bless our leaders with patience and wisdom. For healing and justice wherever harm is dealt. Provide human vindication for all who are oppressed. Free victims of human trafficking and forced labor. Deliver all who are bound by debt. Feed all who hunger and guard refugees fleeing famine, poverty, and war. Comfort those suffering the effects of natural disasters, especially those in Colorado and California affected by wildfires. And those in Texas and Louisiana and throughout the Gulf Coast recovering from the devastation of Hurricane Laura. Watch over those who are suffering illnesses of mind, body, and spirit. We pray especially this morning for Dorothy and Roy Hyman, the family of baby Ruby Peach, Tom, Christine, and Tess, Fidel, Audrey, Andrea and Marianne, Josephine, Norma, the family of Albert Reinhardt, the family of Bill Herbst, the family of Donald Summer, Cheryl, Dwayne, Cliff, Linda, and those we have named before you. Teach us to forgive. Remind us that you do not always accuse us. Still our tongues when we are tempted to pass judgment and argue over opinions. Make this congregation a community of mercy for one another and for all our neighbors. For what else will the church pray for this morning? I invite you to lift up your prayers either silently or aloud. We pray that you will help pupils and parents as they begin this new school year and allow every pupil to feel your presence and blessing each and every day. Father, we pray that these pupils will not fail, fear because your word encourages us to be strong and courageous. We pray that you will open the eyes of every pupil to receive new challenges, revelation, and insight in Jesus' name. Allow every pupil and parent to support teachers as they educate children of all ages. Give every pupil a spirit of enthusiasm, motivation, and self-discipline. Give every parent a spirit of understanding so they will effectively listen to the needs of their child. Father, inspire every pupil to do the best that they can this year. We pray for all teachers as they enter in a new academic year. We pray that this new school year will be fortified with your peace, understanding, and most of all, your love and direction. We ask that every teacher will learn how to wait upon you, and that you shall renew their strength as eagles. Lord, help every teacher to be able to manage the demand of the job. We pray that they will run and not become weary. They will walk and not faint. Powerful God, our refuge and our strength. We turn to you for peace and security 
as we recall the attacks on 9-11. We thank you for the bravery and the sacrifice of those who saved lives as firefighters, police officers, rescue crews, and dedicated and devoted civilians. Comfort and strengthen the family and friends of those who died. Give healing and patience to the survivors of the attack who are living with continued physical and psychological pain. May those who survived through gratitude not feel. Assure each person whose life changed forever of your protection and strength. Dispel the nightmares. Silence the anxieties. May we learn to depend on the security that you offer. We pray for peace that comes only from you. May our suffering awaken in us an awareness of the pain and fear that so many people around the world live with each day. And may we learn how to pray for those who struggle against oppression and injustice. Gracious God, our world changed so dramatically on 9-11, seeing how easily buildings can fall and how quickly lives can end. As we remember 9-11, may it remind us that you are only true security. Continue to give us your strength, your compassion, your hope, your love, and your peace. Whether we live or whether we die, we are yours. We thank you for those who have shown us faithfulness, for the knees that taught us how to bow to you, and the tongues that taught us how to pray. All these things, and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy. For Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now gather in with God's Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A few announcements this morning. First of all, look who we are. We're back in the sanctuary. We're preparing. This is a, a uh, dress rehearsal for our getting back together worship on October 4th. So we hope that you will join us. There will be a lot of precautions that we need to take. But we are, we've always been open for business. We've always been connected. But now we will be able to see each other face to face. Speaking of face to face, on Friday the 18th, September 18th, next Friday at 7 o'clock, is our outdoor concert. I know Rita and Rob and Lynn and Erica have been working hard on this concert. And uh, we invite you to join us. All they have to do is wear a mask and bring your own lawn chairs, and, and the rest is good to go. We'll do the rest. Is that fair enough? We'll do the rest. Uh, that's it right now. Anything else anybody has to announce? Not hearing anything? And now may the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us in favor and grant us peace.
long I have served the Lord. Thanks be to God. Stay home as best you can. Keep wearing that mask. I'm not through this yet. Stay safe. And whatever you do, use your good judgment. Stay connected like we have been connected throughout this whole thing. And remember, God loves us. And God is taking care of us. And God will take us through this as God has always taken us through everything since the beginning of creation. Have a blessed day.